Hello everybody, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Dark Souls 3. We talked to Emma, and she told us that sadly, the lords have fled, and they are no longer in Lothric, and in order to find them, I need to head down and look for them. And in order to uh, leave the valley, I need to first face uh, the watchdog of the Boreal Valley. The watchdog of the Boreal Valley is a kind of a tough enemy, especially if it is your first playthrough, but compared to other Dark Souls monsters, it's not that tough. And um, let's see, I don't have Estes flasks, I don't really have that much to go uh, to go and fight him. I can summon this guy right here, but it may not be a good idea. The good idea is to go and rest at the bonfire, uh, maybe visit the shrine and uh, have our Estuses up, but not that much, just one, I think I have one charge, and then get ready to fight Vort of the Boreal Valley. Something that is and that has been interesting to me is that something about uh, Vought and the other enemies like Vought is kind of Bloodborne-esque to me. The way they move, their ferocity and everything, it feels like uh, they, are, they are a nod to Dark Souls, no not Dark Souls, to Bloodborne. Oh you're alive aren't you? I think I uh, sprinted through this area, so these dogs should be alive. I only killed the uh, Axe Wilder? Question mark? Hasn't been that long since I played, so yeah. Alright, so let's rest. Look at this. Look at this tree. It's funny the amount of detail uh, you see, but... If you don't pay close attention to it, you just uh, miss it. The Black Hand armor. Really like this set. Uh, I think I've played the rest of my first playthrough with this set. I'm more of a cosmic, or oh, cosmic, cosmetic Dark Soulsy guy than uh, you know a stats type of guy. If I find an armor uh, that I really like, I always always wear it. Doesn't matter the stats. Reinforces this flask. Thank you. No more. Yes. Pretty be careful. Good. I should probably probably have uh, rescued our good friend Grey Rat before coming back here. But it doesn't matter. Look who's here. Someone out of Yarnum? Yeah, this is the other set that I really like. And it took me uh, up to my second playthrough in order to get it fully. Because in my first playthrough, uh, I missed most of the NPCs' quest lines. And even those that I did advance on, uh, I failed, for example, Ciri's quest line. But yeah, let's talk to him and see what's his deal. Mm. Unkindled, are we? That we are. And fast on the trail of the Lords of Skondid. Indeed. Then these red eyes are for you. Use them to pillage enemies and briefly heighten your strength for your duty. What else are unkindled ashes good for? <laughs> pillage embers for briefly heightened strength for your duty. What else are unkindled ashes good for? <laughs> yeah. For now, that's all he does. He just gives us the cracked red orbs. It's obviously an online playing item. Allows a single invasion of another world. Defeat the host of embers of the world you have invaded to gain the strength of fire. The cracked red eye orb is far from perfect, it seems. Obviously. As Ringfinger Law, Leonhard knows all too well. Does indeed it does. This is an online play item, like it says. You use it to uh, invade and uh, pillage 
other words. Basically, you just do PvP with it as a Red Phantom. But since I'm playing offline, that matters not to me. We will get to that guy later, as we get the trend transposing killing. But for now, off we go back to the High Wall of Lothric. Yes, to this bonfire, because it's closest to the uh, to the boss. I'm so glad that the uh, short, the old Dark Souls one shortcut system is back. I was not a big fan of the uh, old of the Dark Souls two um, shortcut system and the uh, areas and whatnot. Come on, thank you. Not die. I did not upgrade my weapon, nor I did my uh, my abilities. And that's because, like I said. I'm saving these souls in order to get the uh, key, which I believe costs 20,000 souls. So yeah, that was a nice, small... Ooh! Sometimes I do get lucky, but I immediately, immediately not get lucky. <laughs> it does happen. I'm a big fan of this uh, knight armor compared to the uh, counterpart, which is Dark Souls 1 knight armor. This really feels great, so it's nice. Obviously, I would be uh, leaving it behind as soon as I can, and as soon as I find uh, the gear sets that I like. You're still following me, aren't you? Good for you. Good for you. All right. Now die. Now die. Hmm. You know what? After I kill you. And by the way, I don't need to uh, really go all the way and fight the knights and everything. All I have to do is jump through here. This is kind of a shortcut to the boss. That will uh, spare us the toughness of the knights. Which is good. Oh, you're alive. But you're a pushover compared to... Uh, ooh, you give us a raw gem. Nice. A raw gem is really, really good um, early on. Like, if I didn't have a fire gem on, I'd immediately put a raw gem in there. That's much better. But, yeah. Who would we summon? Of course, we do summon um, the master. The master who fought so much and so much tougher enemies that his clothes were torn apart. Pretty, pretty badass. It's funny, the first time that I came here, I thought that this was a sealed area. I thought there was a roof. For some reason, it felt like this was closed. But upon exploring the area further, no, it's an open area. And this is the high wall that she's talking about, Emma was talking about. From another realm comes the watchdog. And make no mistake, Vought is not preventing people from leaving the city. Vought is watching the city from people who wants to climb the wall or come here.
Volt's toughest attack is, as you saw, his dash. If you're not careful, he will immediately deal massive amounts of damage to you. But if you dodge it in time, his other attacks are much, much faster, or much, much slower, not faster, and easy to predict. But he did give me a run through to my money. I almost died, and uh, it was partly to the camera, but I almost died. Alright, so we defeated the watchdog, and now it's time to say hello to a nostalgic nostalgic. Do I dare call it an enemy? Because the first time they appeared, there were no enemies, but you immediately... Oh no, 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 no. They are friends, not enemies. Alright, let's raise the banner. Pretty amazing vista. So ironic that in Dark Souls 1 you see a circle of light and these um, what is their name? I forgot. <laughs> uh, someone do remind me in the chat what is their correct name. But these gargoyles uh, in Dark Souls 1 bring us as we touch the circle of fire from the base up to Lordran, or not Lordran, uh, to An Orlando. But since time and space in general in Dark Souls is kind of convoluted and it's chaotic, in Dark Souls 3 you raise a banner that looks like the circle of light and they come and brings you down from the high wall of Lothric down to here to resume your journey hunting the Lords of Cinder. Again, ironic, amazing, nostalgic, many many words used. We are here now in the lower part of the... Again, I have, for some reason I have Lord One in my head and it will stay there. The High Wall of Warthwick. See? Come at me. Lothric is kind of like the noble area where the uh, people of, you know, heritage and everything, the rich guys are, and the uh, royal family and everything. And this here is the slums. Thank you, dog. You distracted me. I want to talk. And for some reason, you guys are tough. Allowing me, uh, taking all my focus. So yeah, even in death, these things still are an issue in the world of Dark Souls. I think that once someone dies, the boundary between the rich and the poor, the noble and the not so noble, the thieves and the normal guys is gonna disappear, but no, it does not. It stays the same. These guys are the pilgrims, and uh... You've probably have seen them in the uh, trailer, the cinematic trailer once you start the game. Their purpose for some reason is to do a big pilgrimage to Lothric and then die for some reason. <laughs> Except Please this guy. Grant me death. Undo my shackles. <laughs> Then it's true. A champion of Ash, as I live and breathe. To be in your presence is a great honor. I am Yol of Londor, a pilgrim as you can see, only somehow I failed to die as was ordained. Well, perhaps my calling lies elsewhere. Perhaps. Say, champion of Ash, 
How does the idea of taking me into your service strike you? I was once a sorcerer. Surely I can be of use. And your use is far greater than you imagine, and I accept oh, your service. I am honored, truly. I should be dead, yet you have granted me purpose anew. I, Yol of Londor, do solemnly swear myself to you. Yol of Londor, the pilgrim who failed to die is now devoted to serve me. Keep in mind that my first playthrough, I failed through his quest. I find him and uh, at his tragic end and I've got no idea what happened to him. Um, spoiler alert, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you don't go through his uh, quest line, which requires some stuff you need to do, uh, he would die. And for the longest time, I thought that it was the crestfallen warrior who killed him because that fella seemed as shady as it gets. But it turns out that no. He dies eventually, whether you want it or you don't. So, yeah. This time, I will see uh, his quest through. Let's rest here. Although resting here is not required, because again, this is Dark Souls 3, and once you light a fire, that's all. Again, um, as usual, just like the first time I came to this place, um, I was immediately reminded of Bloodborne and the Crookback village. You know, that village, that famous village with the witches and everything. I guess it's partially because this is the graphic engine of Bloodborne. So it's hard not to see the similarities. This is kind of a tutorial. But we find a very, very useful shield. I've played with this shield a lot. And it's great. Especially for a dexterity guy like me. It's a small leather covered round shield. It features a large central protrusion uh, designed for parry and attacks. Skill, obviously, it's parry. Repel an attack at the right time to follow up with a critical hit. Works while equipped in either hand. But the good thing is the frames are not like this one. Uh, the frames of the shield are much bigger, so it's much easier to parry with this shield. As you can see, it's much bigger and wider than it is with the other shield. But the defenses are abysmal. 42% physical reduction compared to 100%. Uh, this is not even the shield I'm wielding. This is the shield I want to wield. So, you know what? As much as I played with it, with it um, I'll stick to the night shield for the time being. Okay. Um, I went through this because this guy is lying in, him, in ambush for me. This is a thief. And I ambushed you this time. You didn't ambush me. Note that I got ambushed in my first playthrough, obviously. Um, this is much like... Uh, it saddens me that this is not, uh, you know, a, like the Pine Resin. Because you can apply this really quickly, just like in Bloodborne. But the effect is really short. And I kind of hoped it's a bit longer, because it's really cool to just, you know, use it on the fly. So, it makes this item more usable in PvP than in uh, PvE compared to normal Pine Resin. Sadly. Alright. Here's another ambush. And as much as I know the game, these guys will still ambush me. They're really well placed. Their AI is kinda okay. 
it's not the best but it's kind of good and uh, as you can see if you let your guard around if you get you like your guard down they will kill you oh really that's lucky me a thrall hood cool well let's read reading time um yeah it's right here there we go hood used to cover the head of lesser folk uh, who were said to work as slaves throughout Lothric also occasionally used to shame and humiliate humiliate criminals it's intriguing that even though these are thieves they used to be uh, slaves so although um, and not although it kind of gives them a motive uh, to fight and to steal in the uh, upper Lothric town. Hmm, I'm kind of doing this backwards. What? Are you bugged, my buddy? Dude, come on! Even though the game is updated to the latest update, you still bugged like this? Aww, that sucks. How can I kill you? There you go. How did you bug out like this? It's interesting. Even in my uh, last playthroughs, he never bugged out like this. Or I don't think I even saw an enemy uh, go through the floor like I did. Interesting. And yeah, take a good, good look. Normally you do it from up there because it's a balcony and you can see all the enemies and uh, what awaits you in this area. But yeah, I didn't do it because I kind of know what's going to happen here, but yeah. And it's so funny to me because for the life of me, I did not see this area. I completed the game entirely the first time. And I did not know there is a bridge here that will lead me up there. There were some items that I seen uh, last time I played and I was like, how on earth can I reach those things? Is it a secret wall or something? But no, 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 no. Uh, it, was just, uh, it was just this bridge that I missed. Always a good thing. Alright, where's my bombs? Barrels, explosive barrels. Enemies sitting near explosive barrels. You guys can do the math. Hopefully I can get it. Nice. And the other people I uh, need to aim a bit higher. Like so. Maybe like this. Boom! That's much better than dealing with you uh, one by one. But you guys aggro one by one, which is good for me. Come on. Alright, let me strike first then. If you don't just want to strike me, I will strike you. Oh, she is a tough one. A friend of me tells me that she looks a lot like um, some character you find in Berserk. And I know that the creators of Dark Souls a name mainly Miyazaki is really, really uh, keen on the Berserk manga and universe. You find many, many references to that universe in here. So it doesn't surprise me that... Uh, what's her name? The Evangelist. Kind of looks like some enemy uh, in Berserk. Which is cool. I like it. Believe it or not, I have yet to watch Berserk. It's Especially the latest one. I kind of watched some old episodes uh, back when uh, it was airing, back in the day, a long time ago. But I don't know. I was younger, maybe it didn't grow on me. But I think um, I will find time to watch it sooner or later. As many times as we bring discussion about Berserk, my friends make sure to tell me that it's a really, really, really good animation to watch. I'll make certain. And um, for now... Hmm. You know what? 
let's go this side. Let's not go that side. But let's kill you guys first. Thank you. Always be patient in Dark Souls. Sometimes striking first is good, but most of the time, patience, patience, patience. That you see them walking slowly and everything, you think that you can strike them without them striking you, but you would be surprised how much damage you take uh, if you don't do that. By the way, if you keep holding uh, down on the D-pad, you automatically go to the Estus Flask. So if you have many items equipped in this slot, all you have to do is just keep pressing the down on D-pad and you automatically go to the Estus Flask. A really, really, really good mechanic. Same thing goes for up. The same thing goes for um, your primary weapons and everything. I hope. I haven't tested it yet. I know it go, uh, it works uh, like so for uh, up and down on the T-pad, but left or right, I have yet to try. Large soul. I need all these souls. I should work a gob. Well, let's see the uh, worker gob. I don't think they have much lore in them. They're just workers, but let's check. I've checked this. I've checked X. Oh yeah, I checked the deserter. Anyway, garb worn by inhabitants of the undead settlement. Official attire for the dissection and burial of undead. Naturally, the ceremonial significance of such work is long forgotten. Indeed, no one could continue to entertain such horror. Yeah, it's just workers. And that's not a normal worker. That's a burying ceremonial worker. Man. In a land... Ooh. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? I was just talking about this earlier. Wasn't I? Okay. Let's hide here and drink some Estus. You let your guard for a half second and you will get easily ambushed. And I lost a lot of blood, a lot of HP because of that. I mean, look at the uh, three daggers were stuck on me. Miraculously, I stayed alive, but yeah. Again, great ambushes. Oh, look at that. The night shield is doing magic for me right now. The blows I uh, sustained by just uh, keeping my guard up are a lot. Come on, brother. Okay, okay. I will strike first, no problem. This is the item I was talking about. Because I come all the way uh, from that door, all the way up to here. And I look up, I see the item, I've got no idea how to get it. And this is how to get the item. Come on, where are you at? Oh, you dropped down. All right. Let me kill you first. Then you kill your friend. Ironically, the word kill in Dark Souls doesn't really mean that much. Because you kill someone, they would return. It's the curse. The curse of the undead. What's this item? Ooh, the plank shield. Our brother, the plank shield. Make no mistake, this is no enemy. Do not strike him when you see them. Another Nana disappeared. The grand thing carries a cage. He ever has his cage. And Nana's never coming back. So come into the cage and become Nana's shade. Another Nana disappeared. So, he, a nana, so come in. He's hinting. He's hinting to the uh, stuff. But yeah, this is for the uh, Mound Makers Covenant. Should you want to join the Covenant early on in the game, there is an enemy with a cage on his back. And all you have to do is just ride the cage. I believe he's somewhere around here. But I'm not interested in that 
Covenant. Uh, if you level up, they will give you a really, really nice katana. It kind of looks like uh, Bloodborne's katana. Uh, what is the Shikage? The Shikage. It's the Shikage. It's kind of tough to uh, try to pronounce the, the correct names, the correct Japanese names while speaking uh, English. It kind of sounds weird to me. I'll try. I'll try. Doesn't matter. Um, and we picked up the plank shield, which you can also find in. It's the only shield uh, you find in Bloodborne, and it's a funny shield. I think it's just a joke shield. Makeshift shield cobbled together from wooden planks provides minimal protection and at the cost of moderate humiliation. <laughs> a shield bash. Interesting. Without lowering your guard, strike the enemy with the shield to knock them back or stagger them. Works while equipped in other hands. It works either way, on the left or the right hand. Pretty lovely shield. I don't know if the deprived... Ow. I do not know if the deprived uh, in Dark Souls 3... I do not remember if it starts with this shield or not. But yeah, it should be the deprived shield. Yeah, lying there, waiting for me. Come on. This guy's wields the Thrall Axe. And it's a nice axe. Nice damage and everything. If you uh, ever do find it. It can drop down through here. Or you can just go the uh, classic way. And you know what? I just came through here to uh, explore the area and pick up the Titanite Shard. Interesting in Dark Souls, Titanite Shards are not that easy to find. You know, it would take us a while to be able to uh, freely buy them. So every Titanite and, uh, you know, the other crafting components uh, are necessary now. <laughs> this attack works much better than the, the normal attack. Charcoal pine. It gives us range and allows me to attack them without them retaliating. And as we drop down here, we find a Warrior of the Sunlight medal. This is to rank up in the uh, Sunbro Covenant. And I like the Covenant system. Oh, this is not the uh, rank up, this is to join the Covenant. In Dark Souls 3, all you have to do is just have these items and all you have to do is just equip one in order to be part of that covenant. It's much better in Dark, than Dark Souls 1 uh, system where if you quit certain covenants, um, you can even be a sinner and it would cost you dearly. This time you can just switch freely without a problem from one covenant to the other. I like the Sun Brothers. We will discover in in due time, we'll discover who's making this Estus suit. Our iconic, lovely brother. Anyway, let's head through here and find this dude. You see the red eyes glowing. And the significance of a red-eyed enemy is that it's just an enemy who peered through the abyss. He was in the abyss, or he just looked at the abyss. And thus, he is a bit tougher than average. The slash doesn't do that much damage. The stab, or the thrust, is their vulnerability, so keep that in mind. If you have a thrusting weapon, always use its thrusting ability to deal massive damage to them. This should be an enemy. Yes, yes, yes. This too. Indeed. Right on par with this, guys. Do I want to go through this slowly or do I go to do I want to sprint through this? It's a dilemma. If I sprint through this, I risk of dying. 
Because I, I was thinking maybe I should just rush and uh, sit through the bonfire. But you know what? That's wrong. I cannot sit at the bonfire because I will be greeted by an invasion, an NPC invasion. And it's a tough NPC invasion too, so yeah. I probably would be unable to sit at the bonfire. Yeah, you keep doing that. You keep doing it. Alright, you know what? Where's the... Where's the ladder? I believe that there is a ladder allowing me... Oh yeah, it's this way. Allowing me to... Go and say hi to her. To Madam Evangelist. Be careful. Ooh, that's convenient. Because all I wanted is just to pick up this. And, uh... What? Are you back to your neutral? No, you're not. You're just down there, aren't you? Would you be kind and come through here so I can uh, drop kick you? No? Alright. Never mind. You want to fight fair and square, and I've got no problem with that. Oh, I wanted a backstab. Her maze is tough. If you're not careful, not only it deals a good amount of damage, it also procs bleed. So if she gets to, depending on which, which class, oh, we got it, the spiked mace. Depending on which class you are, this mace can prove pretty dangerous to you. Choice weapon of the evangelists of the Cathedral of the Deep, mentors of the dwellers of the undead settlement. Its long, sharp spikes cause great pain and bleeding, and its skill is Spin Bash. Bash foes with a large spin in motion, and utilize momentum to transition into an overhanded strong attack smash. Uh, oh, I didn't check the stats. Where is it? There you go. So it has a C scaling on strength, and you need 21 strength in order to be able to freely wield it. Interesting weapon. You know what? I was wrong. I can get to the bonfire without proccing the uh, invasion. I can even sit at the bonfire. But I should probably dispose of you. Oh, it's too late. It's too late. I was too greedy. No, no, and no. Stay with me and give me that sharp gem. Ah, oh, I wanted to sit out the bonfire, but yeah, come on, let's do. Can I pair you with this shield? That is the question, you see? Pretty tough enemy. But come on here. I do not want to fight that guy with you because one on one, you're manageable. Two on two, problematic, yeah. I wanted to evade your weapon art because that's the one that deals the most damage and instead you did a normal attack then your weapon art and dealt massive damage to me anyway. Alright. Was that intentional? I guess it is intentional uh, if you were two hand or something. That's hyper armor. I could not I cannot stagger him through that attack. And uh, he's. Yeah, 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 you do that. That's good for me. That's a good chunk of damage that I dealt to you. But unfortunately, he does. He does have horn. And I think it's two Estus shards. Come on. Come on, don't be a player. You're just an NPC. Don't cast Warm for me and uh, just stay there and recover all your HP. That's kind of stupid. Alright. Come down here. Come on. Come on. I can light the bonfire. Nice. Uh, I think I broke his AI. What is wrong? I've never seen all these things. 
It only happened uh, after the latest patch. Or is it just me? There you go, come on. I'm down here. I'm waiting for you. I can go nowhere. Although I want to check if I can sit out the bonfire. Oh yeah, I can. Alright, never mind. I'll see you in a bit. I'll see you in a bit. I'll fight you and defeat you. Well, it's a bit for me, but it's gonna be the next episode for you guys. So this has been Yagami, and I will see you later.